Now then, this is interesting. It's a Toyota Prius. Uh, generation 2 battery. Yeah. Yeah, hybrid battery. Yeah. Which is quite interesting. Nickel metal hydride, not lithium. Which again is interesting. And there are 28 cells. I'll just show you a uh, quick... Where are we? Here's the label. Let's not mess around. There's the label. Okay. And then of course there's a huge amount of stuff. Right. So I picked this up recently and it seems like they're right up on voltage. And I know there's a bit of current in there because we got an occasional spark. So what I'm proposing is I've been doing a bit of research. Yeah, and you can quite happily take uh, these cells up to 1.4 per individual volts, that is, per individual nickel metal hydride cell. And there are six cells in each of these units here. These ones, these ones here, yeah. Okay, so effectively it means that each of these could be 8.4 volts yeah and if you multiply that by 7 you get 7 8 is that right 8 7 8 56 yes plus 4 7 is 28 so that's 56 plus 2.8 right that's 58.8 which is fine because I run the batteries to about 56 volts okay but it also means that uh, we our cutoff point on low battery is 47 so it means that these will never get deeply discharged because these can go down to one volt yeah so that would be eight times seven so, is that right no six times seven six sevens are 42 so you know bottom line on these is 42 volts so we're, that's, that seems to me quite a happy medium. And then, of course, we have got 28 cells. So if you decide, divide 28 by 4, you get 7. Yeah? So I can divide this up into 4 packs. Uh, and each one being a nominal 48 volts. Yeah? Uh, and about 6.5 amp hours. So therefore, four times six and a half. Yeah. So I thought, why not give it a go? Now, in amongst all this stuff on the end, which I've sort of roughly disassembled, yeah, there's some sort of battery management board, which, ha which has got a multi-pin plug, and each one of those pins went to a separate junction on here yeah so that was sort of balanced charging but on my Bosch battery drill that's a nickel metal hydride and there's no balanced charging on that and there's actually no balanced charging within each one of these little packs or cells which has got six little batteries in it, in series. So I'm thinking, where am I going to get a BMS that will handle about eight volts? Yeah, and up to seven, so a 7S. No chance. So I think that um, we'll just, as long as we stay within not overcharging and not on and over discharging then I'm going to give this a go so what I'm going to do is um, I think there's a negative there that's the end no there it is positive there okay so one two three four five six seven 
and at that point there I'm going to split that and that will be a negative so I'll bring a negative cable out yeah and all the cables will want to be the same length just so you know, there's equal amount of resistance in each cable because you know, if you put a little short one there and a really long one here you have a slightly more resistance so we'll make them all the same we will um, connect to these bolts yeah I have actually disconnected somewhere there and over here so therefore it's not the full 200 volts okay so I'm poking about and you're going oh don't do that no I've made it safe yeah so I'm gonna get on with that you no need to watch me just um, putting eyes on the ends of cable and soldering them up but that's the theory so far and then when we have a terminal here with a positive and negative then that can be put across the big the main 48 volt battery bank through a fuse um, and then we'll just monitor the situation I think in two or three weeks time might pull the fuse out and just check all the voltages right because at the moment it's not fully charged but it's not bad now how are we going to do this right can you see that no you can't because of the the lights I think that's all right okay so what have we got we got a positive there and a negative there and we're on let's go on 20 volts 7.45 and they're all that well there's a couple of down this end at 7.5 but that's pretty close all right so let me just get on with that and I'll get back to you when I'm done so there we go try to keep those as safe as possible where's the next one there it is so we've got an intermediate over there positive and negative so we got positive from there to that negative then the positive from there to that negative I removed the bridge on each of these connections yeah whereas they've got the that link there these haven't so then that blue goes now then the next pack is you can't quite see it but it's over there it's here yeah there it is that's better and then back down to the negative these these uh, eyes are quite thick it's reasonably thick cable um, those are crimped and soldered the ends of these cables are soldered together and then put in that connector that's quite a big connector so we're done now so let's just check the voltage assume we can see yes we can negative positive 52 volts brilliant okay I'm going to connect that up now through a fuse so that then I can disconnect it these are fairly hefty I'd say they're a good 25 kilos something like that yeah uh, this thing here is supposed to be a vent in the case of if any one of the the cells actually ruptures but I believe the individual cells are sealed in here and then they're in this case yeah and this these black things here they're compression rods apparently they're very much the same as lithium uh, cells 
they need to be compressed otherwise they expand as they're charging and and get damaged okay I think we're there let's go and uh, wire it up it's a few days later probably more like six or seven and the pack is in place all wired up and I've got a meter across one of the blocks yep and we did a drop test there's 28 of these cells split into four so uh, four sevens are 28 and they're six six and a half amp hours each so four six is 24 let's call it 25 amp hours so uh, at 48 volts that's 1.2 kilowatt something like that we use some of this nichrome wire which is out of one of the old fashioned big storage heaters the ones that were about a foot thick really big chunky things anyway so we did a 10 amp drop test on this we disconnected it from the main battery pack at that connector there and then connected in with a short cable the uh, nichrome dump load so let's just have a look at those figures okay so here's a few details yeah just the cells go between 1.4 that's the individual one and there are six of those in the main in each of the blocks so 1.1 uh, 1 to 1.4 each block six to 8.4 which meant that seven of those blocks in series goes to 58.8 uh, volts so we did we started off here we are with the load test or the drop test we started up 54 volts so the batteries weren't fully charged yeah okay um, uh, and so they started off at 7.7 .7 volts per block and we finished at 47 volts because you know, that's where the lead acid would, would be stopping so that's what I figured because we're talking about using this battery in parallel with lead acid so effectively we're only using a small portion of the available power A we're not charging it all the way up and B we're not discharging it all the way we had 14 minutes at 10 amps which doesn't sound a lot and quite honestly it wasn't yeah so here is the individual cells at the point of discharge now the first pack or oh, yeah, pack of blocks we were all around 6.9 there's a 6.7 there but they were sort of reasonably even-ish not perfect by any means yeah, but this is a pack that came out of a scrap Prius so we can't expect miracles the second pack 7.2, 6.8, 6.3 yeah okay uh, to 7.1 so mmm okay now the next pack we've got 5.9 but within five minutes after uh, switching the load off that bounced back to 6.4 but that's still not very good then we've got loads of sevens there's a 7.1 there and we check the bounce back and it bounced back to 7.2 and then we've got a 6.6 .6 and a 6 uh, again that 6 bounced back to 6.5 so we've got several duff cells in there and I'm thinking if you take those out so therefore we would only have three packs but they would um, 
be more stable yeah but having said that this little Prius pack is just acting as a buffer yeah we've got all sorts of batteries connected to this slot now we've got lead acid we've got nickel metal hydride and we've got lithium iron phosphate so each one is a bit of a compromise and it seems like at the moment the lithium iron phosphate, because we're in the middle of summer, the lithium iron phosphate is doing all the work fair enough but I'm not over discharging them that's a very important thing to, um, to keep the cycles down but what do you think? Do you think this is just acting as a buffer or do you think I ought to um, disconnect because you can because you can actually because each each block has got a bolt either end and a little buzz bar so I can actually uh, unwire or take them out of circuit and only use the ones that were showing the highest voltages probably be more stable Tell me what you think and I will catch up with you very soon. Cheers for now.